What causes the loss of over 50% of the native global biodiversity? Could it be climate change? Overexploitation? Genetically modified foods? Human overpopulation? Surprisingly, it's introduced in invasive species. These are species that negatively affect plants and animals in the habitat they were introduced to. Invasive species outcompete native species in a variety of ways. They can grow faster, reproduce more often with more offspring, disperse farther and faster, change form in case of hazardous surroundings, tolerate a wider range of environments, live off more sources of food, associate with humans, or have prior successful invasions. Australia's fight against cane toads is probably the most widely known example of invasive species. Cane toads were originally brought to Australia to protect the sugar cane crops by feeding on cane beetles. Sadly, it didn't work and the idea went south from there. The toads quickly abandoned the sugar cane crops because they weren't able to reach the cane beetles at the top. Having the ability to eat a wide variety of food, they easily invaded the surrounding countryside and continued to increase their coverage of Australia up to 60 kilometers per year. Also, it turned out that cane toads are poisonous to Australia's native lizards and snakes, which caused a rapid decline in their populations. There's been a long history of individuals trying to control perceived pests by introducing foreign species, only to have their plans backfire. An example of this is the small Indian mongoose, which was introduced to reduce rat populations, but instead fed on incredibly rare bird species. Or the New Guinea flatworm, which was introduced to reduce the giant East African snail, but instead reduced the rare land snail fauna, only native to that island or their air mine, which, after being introduced to New Zealand to control rat and hare populations, ended up becoming a threat to native bird species. The vast majority of introduced and invasive species are not intentional blunders, but accidental or inadvertent. Usually, they are just stowaways in cargo shipping, as was the case with the Asian tiger mosquito, which has spread across the globe. They breed in the water sitting in the bottom of tires that were kept outside, and managed to catch a ride around the world. Chestnut blight is responsible for the widespread destruction of this once common chestnut tree. It is thought that it was brought over by contaminated Japanese chestnut trees. Within 40 years, the entire 4 billion chestnut tree population was devastated. From the Americas, the Dutch brought back wild sage to Europe, which quickly spread and invaded Asia and Oceania. In the early 80s, warty comb jellies were introduced from North America to the Black Sea when they were hitching a ride in the ballast waters of oil tankers. The common starling made its way to North America by the way of Eugene Shefflin, who tried to introduce every bird mentioned in the works of William Shakespeare, for some reason. And lastly, the black rat, which is now found across the globe thanks to shipping from their native home of India. Although some of the worst invasive species are common animals such as wild dogs, cats, pigs, goats, and gray squirrels, the problem is that outside of their native ecosystem, they cause havoc to crops, food webs, and spread disease. Some introduced species have made beneficial relationships. What would New Zealand be without their sheep? The only native land animal to New Zealand is the lesser short-tailed bat. And consider zebra mussels, who in some circumstances can clean lake water so native species can thrive. But remember, invasive species can have devastating effects on ecosystems and spread nasty diseases. So make sure you buy your firewood at your campsite, pour out that old bird bath, and Neville, maybe it's time you left Trevor at home this year.